Hello everybody. Um, I am coming to you from my vanity where I am trying to slap on a little bit of mascara and lip gloss before I go early vote. Um, the dogs are acting crazy in the background. I have a couple of them closed out because they got all kind of energy and strong opinions apparently about things. My room is an absolute utter mess. I got crap strode everywhere. But the Lord has laid this on my heart uh, really for a while now, but I don't typically get into politics as far as I, I, I take my own personal responsibility very seriously, but I don't try to tell other people what to do. And that's not what I'm doing now for the most part. Um, I won't tell you how to vote. I won't tell you which way I lean, though if you know me, you probably know. And uh, um, This is not a red versus blue, Republican versus Democrat issue at all. Um, this is a good versus evil. This is definitely spiritual and supernatural in nature. And if you don't believe that, you are not paying attention, um, you know, or, or the devil's lying to you and got your eyes closed and your, your heart closed to what, what's going on. But this is to me, is the most important election for sure of our time, but probably of all time. I feel that strongly in my spirit. Don't come at me. I don't need your opinions. I don't care. I know what I feel. I know how I feel. If you feel differently, that's you. That's between you and the good Lord. But I am hearing from multiple, multiple, multiple sources, all unrelated sources, really, that 50% or more of God's people, Christians, are not planning to vote in this election. Um, and you may think, what's well, my choice? It's my free will. And y yes, you do have free will, but you also have a responsibility. Um, I understand that some people are like, I'm not political. You don't have to be political. I just told you it's it's spiritual and it's, it's important and it's critical, really. Um, so you don't have to be political to have this responsibility on your shoulders because it is on your shoulders. And if you choose not to, that's on you as well. Um, again, I won't tell you how to vote. What I will tell you is you need to seek him. I have. Uh, his word is very clear about some of the issues that are on the table. Very, very clear. Uh, and you need to lean into that. You need to lean into him. You need to ask him for discernment so that you can hear his voice clearly so that you can let him lead and guide you and not be misled because the devil is hard at work. He is deceptive. He is cunning. He is slick, slick, slick. Don't be deceived. Don't be fooled. Seek God. Uh, the devil knows this word. Trust me. He knows this word better than you do. And if you don't, if you, if you're not in it, he's got one up on you already. So anyway, um, I want to point out just, just one story or, you know, um, account in the Bible, uh, that goes along with the importance of this. I mean, 50% of God's people have given up. You don't trust God. You don't, you don't think there's any hope. As long as there is breath in our lungs, as long as he wakes you up in the morning, there is hope and you have a duty and you have a responsibility now, pray for the leaders, all of them. The ones you don't like, the ones you do like. If you're not political, pray for all of them anyway. Pray for God's hand to lead and guide you. Pray for his presence to inhabit your being and help you decide this. But get your tail up and go vote. It is so critically important. So I want to point to... Um, the story of Hezekiah in Isaiah 39. Now, there's a lot that went on with Hezekiah. I mean, God literally turned back time for him um, after he rendered punishment and said, hey, you're going to die. And then Hezekiah cried out to the Lord. He repented and the Lord turned back the, the dial and, you know, the sundial and gave him more time and said, you know, he would let him live for, for, for a little bit longer. Um, and so, you know, this, so we're, we're past that point and we are at, um, the the point where he brings in the king from Babylon and he shows him all his business, all the, the goods, all like where, come on, Hezekiah, you know better. Anyway, that's not the point that he showed that, which again, like why? But anyway, that's not the point of the story. So I'm going to read to you because a lot of people may miss this or they may not really get what it's saying. So I'm going to read to you. Um, 
because you know God. Whenever there's turmoil in the in the world, um, or in you know whatever, and God's people are not doing what they should, or standing up, and evils prevailing, God sends prophets. He did it then. He does it now. You don't. It's not an up for debate. I believe it. The word says it. Um, and when there's turmoil and people aren't listening and those in power are not listening, God sends in prophets to check them. Okay. And the prophets are like, they don't play around. I mean, they, they, they get up in the business and they do what God told them to do. Uh, even when it's hard, even at the risk of their lives. And he still uses prophets today. There's nothing new under the sun. What he did then he'll do now all the things. So prophets are still very relevant believe it don't believe it i really don't care but we talking about prophet isaiah right now okay so isaiah went to king hezekiah and asked him like what did those men that were here want what do they want the men that were here where were they from and he says oh they came from babylon what did they see ask isaiah and he says oh they saw everything i showed them everything i own all my treasuries then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, listen to this message from the Lord of heaven's armies. Again, I'm in the NLT because that's just what I, what I read. Um, I mean, I read others too, but he says, okay. So then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, listen to this message from the Lord of heaven's armies. The time is coming when everything in your palace, all the treasures stored up by your ancestors until now will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Some of your very own sons will be taken away. Your sons, some of your very own sons will will be taken away into exile. They will become eunuchs who will serve in the palace of Babylon's king. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, after all that, now I'd be like, what? But he didn't. He said, this message you have given me from the Lord is good for the king was thinking at least there will be peace and security during my lifetime. He just told him, your son's going to get taken into exile. They're going to take everything. But Hezekiah's like, I won't be around. I don't care. Not my problem. That's what y'all are doing by not voting. Plain and simple. Some of you have kids. Some of you have grandkids. If you don't have kids and grandkids, you got nieces and nephews. If you don't have nieces and nephews, you know there are other people coming behind you. The world is crazy. It's dark. It's sinister. It's getting worse by the day. Look around you. Ask God for discernment. Like I said, it is getting bad. <laughs> I don't know how you get up in the morning and you don't see that. If your mindset is, whew, well, by the time it gets so bad, it's unbearable because it's pretty unbearable now. I won't be around really don't matter. That's not the Christian way. You need to care about the generations that are coming behind you. You need to do everything you can. Again, not telling you how to vote. You vote your, I'm not going to say vote your heart because your heart's wicked. The Bible says so. You vote the way God leads you to vote. Um, pray to him. His word is full, full of every answer you will need on every issue that we're facing right now. All of them. It's very, very clear. And I won't go into that because again, I really try to stay out of everybody else's politics. I have strong opinions on my own, but I feel like, you know, how you vote between you and God, it's not up to me, but I'm asking you, I'm telling you, child of God, man of God, woman of God, you have a responsibility. You can't shrug your shoulders and say, I won't be around much longer. Doesn't matter. I mean, by the time it all hits the fan, the fan, uh, I won't, I mean, not my problem. I won't be here. I won't even know. I, I'll, I'll be, I'll be on to glory. Uh, we have a duty to protect, to preserve righteousness which is not what's happening in the world right now. There's a whole lot of unrighteousness and evil and darkness. And we cannot be like Hezekiah. Now, I, I'm, let me let me preface that. Hezekiah was a man of God. Now, was he, was he imperfect? Yes. Did he fall, fall sometimes? Of course, we all do. But he always turned back to God. He always sought God. He always sought repentance and restoration into God's presence. But this right here, this lackadaisical... Not my problem. Ooh, thank you, Lord. You're not going to make me have to deal with it. It'll, it'll happen after I'm gone and I won't have to worry about it. Christian people. 50% of you are shrugging your shoulders and throwing your hands up and saying, nothing I can do out of my hands. 
And a lot of you may say, oh, well, God's will is going to be done no matter what. Okay, valid point. But all through this word, every time God gave instruction, it was up to man to act to bring it in. Could he snap his fingers and make it all be whatever he wanted it to be? Absolutely. But then we wouldn't have free will. And we wouldn't be choosing him because our hearts want to. And that's not love. So he gives free will. Even though he could snap his fingers, make it happen, we have a part to play in the miracles in our lives, in society, in our communities, for the next generation. This this entire word talks about God's posterity and training up the next generation making sure that they are taught righteousness, that they are shown the way that they are protected, that we do our part. We are to have compassion for other people. And if you were throwing your hands up and going, yeah, not going to do it, you're leaving a mess for them. You're leaving them in dire, dire, dire circumstances. Because again, if Christian people aren't voting by half, then that's a whole lot of darkness that's voting in the other way. And we can't have it. <laughs> we can't have it. You can't sit and go, whew, not my problem. It is your problem. It absolutely is your problem. So I implore you, I implore you. Early voting, I mean, you're usually in and out quickly. If you don't want to do it day of, if you think there's going to be crowds, Whatever, you have ample, ample, ample opportunity between now and election day to get it done. And it's biblical. It's literally life or death at this point. And I know that seems really dramatic. Um, but we are facing some dark, dark, dark times. And you cannot be silent. You cannot shrink back. You cannot sit in the shadows. You have to have your voice heard. You have to stand in that gap for the next generation, for the babies, for the children, for the lost, for all the people coming behind you. You cannot, you know, you're supposed to leave the world better than you found it if you can. And the way to do that is to point to God in everything you do. And in your voting, seek Him, point to Him, and vote for righteousness. But get your tail up and do it. You can't be silent. You can't sit still. You can't shuck your responsibility. People of God, Christian people, you have a responsibility. And I am begging you. I am imploring you. If you need a ride to go get it done, you're homebound, whatever you need from me to help you, if, if you have said, I'm not gonna, and, and you now feel compelled that, hey, it's not an option because really and truly it isn't. And if you think that it is, that is the devil in your ear and you are listening to him and you are giving him power over the one who created it all. And I, I'm i praying for you because that's not okay. So I'm telling you, people of God, not voting is not an option. 50% of you cannot sit home and not have your voice heard and stand in that gap and go and vote in a righteous manner. Pray for the leaders. Pray for those seeking positions of power. Pray for those already in power that probably need to be pushed out but aren't for what, you know, whatever because government and whatever. Man's nonsense. But I'm telling you, men and women of God, we can't. We can't. Sit still. Stay home. Get your tail out there and vote. Get in the Word. Seek Him. Pray to Him. And get your tail out there and vote. I love y'all. I really do. But I also love the kids that are coming behind me. And I got kids. I don't have grandkids. I might one day. But even them aside, I care enough about the next generation. I feel an incredible burden to vote. And you should too. And if you want to talk about it, private message me if you need a little bit more nudging or whatever. But, but people of God, please hear my heart. Go vote.